This motor came back to us after only one and a half months of use, with the customer stating it was seized and not running. Now these units are fairly simple, so it should be easy to find out what went wrong, but there are a few tricky components. This is a Parker TG LSHT motor, which stands for Low Speed High Torque. It's specifically a TG0280 US080. Let's look at why you might use a tapered shaft for this motor versus a straight shaft. A tapered shaft can be wedge fit into a pulley or wheel hub using a bolt, which ensures better power transmission with less movement and play. The power that these motors produce allows them to drive heavy machine wheels, run combine windrow headers, crank hydraulic winches, and much more. Now that we have a bit of context about this motor, let's get back to the disassembly. As our mechanic removes the commutator ring, we get our first clue that something went catastrophically wrong with this motor. The commutator valve, which directs flow of oil to the rotor, should be held in place by the connecting shaft, but it appears that this shaft has snapped. Soon we'll be able to take a closer look at that shaft and its function. Next up is the manifold, which channels the directed oil towards the rotor. Now at this point, we don't know how bad the rest of the motor actually is. We know that a piece snapped off but we don't know whether it's salvageable or not, and we're about to find out. Yeah, it's bad. The connecting shaft is completely sheared. There's heavy damage on the rotor, along with contaminated oil. Now, how does this rotor actually work? Pressurized hydraulic oil is pushed into a gap between the rotor and the vane rollers, which is a high pressure zone. This causes the rotor to turn, which creates a new high pressure zone and rotates the output shaft. On the other side of the rotor, a gap is closed and fluid is pushed back out through the valve towards the output. The output shaft completes one rotation for every seven orbits of the rotor, which is why so much power can be made at low speed. After removing the rotor set, the mechanic can now remove the connecting shaft, which links the rotor to the output shaft. The connecting shaft, as seen in this diagram, has a slight angular offset, which allows it to rotate with the orbiting rotor and spin the output shaft. The teeth on the shaft are angled to accommodate this motion. Now we still don't know what exactly happened or why, but the output shaft might give us a good clue. When we look at the shaft, we can see heat discoloration, which makes it possible that the motor was overheating due to friction, contamination, or excessive load. Now we also see heavy wear on all of the plates and rotor, which means that metal was grinding away inside of the motor during operation. To get some more insight, let's go back to the mechanic who disassembled the unit to see what he thought. So it probably had contamination that then caused it to bind up and then you have a stop surface against a rotating surface. That friction probably just snapped the shaft. So pretty much the whole thing started. The rotor also seized at one point as it needed to be hammered out of the stator. Next, we'll see what Fraser and John think. It's sort of or orbiting around this thing here and then all of a sudden it stopped, but that shaft kept going. Simple enough, right? Now, why this thing stopped? Could have been something jammed in it. Yeah, could have been something external. Yep. Yeah. So it's because it's the connection between the shaft and the oil, right? The oil. That's right. Fraser and John came to the same conclusion that contamination had made the commutator valve seize, which resulted in a lack of oil flowing to the still spinning rotor and eventually snapping the connecting shaft. The rotor likely continued to spin, which would result in the heavy scoring between the plates as there is both no lubrication and high heat. We were able to determine the most likely cause of this motor's failure, but it is up to the user to prevent these failures by maintaining hydraulic system health and following procedures. Parker and other manufacturers state that the most common hydraulic pump and motor failures are due to poor quality of fluid or lack of lubrication.